This video discusses word problems with multiplication or division of whole numbers. The most important thing you want to do when approaching a word problem is to be able to translate from words, the sentence that they give us, or sentences, into equations. And in order to do that, I have this nice little table of translating from words into equations. So as you can see for equals, we wouldn't just say flat out equals, right? We would say gives yields is the same as, right? There's lots of different words, even more than what's on this table, but I think this table gives us a good start. I'm going to point out some sticking points, right? Some ones that tend to throw us off. So the first one for that's going to be sum, right? We could say addition plus add more than increased by, but when in math, the sum means you are adding two numbers. For subtraction, that word's going to be difference, right? If I take the difference, of two numbers, like what's the difference of five and three? Um, they have a difference of two, they're two apart on a number line, but I subtracted those two numbers to kind of figure out that it was two. For multiplication, we call that the product. If we're multiplying two numbers, we're finding the product. And for division, we could say ratio, we could just blatantly say divide, but the one that kind of throws people sometimes is quotient, right? When I'm dividing two numbers, I'm asking you to find the quotient. So now that we have kind of a little cheat sheet to translate from words into an equation, how should we approach uh, setting up a word problem? And we may not use all of these steps. Um, some word problems we can kind of set up without doing uh, everything on this list, but it's a great place to get started. Okay, so when given a word problem first, you want to read the problem carefully. What information is missing? What do we need to find? What is the problem essentially asking you to find, right? Assign a variable uh, to represent what's unknown. If you need to do this, sometimes you don't have to. I don't think for these next two problems we will. If it is a problem about, say, like area or perimeter, right? Sketch it out. Make a drawing. I'm not a great artist. You've seen that. Um, in previous videos, um, but it can really help you to visualize. Finally, you're going to need to write an equation using the variables that you came up with. If you do need to assign a variable, quick tangent, make sure there's something that, you know, makes sense. Like if you're trying to figure out numbers of cats and dogs, use like C and D, right? So, you know, C is cats and D is dogs. I know typically in math we use X or Y, but assign a variable that makes sense. So then you solve your equation, and you're like, oh, great, I conquered this word problem. I'm doing a great job. And then you have to state your answer. And the number one thing I ask is, does it seem reasonable, right? If you solve a problem and the cat weighed 500 pounds or the car was driving 367 miles per hour, those aren't really reasonable answers. Maybe if the cat was a tiger, but I'm talking about, like, domestic cat, right? So that kind of gives you a clue that you need to go back and check your work, okay? So now the part you've all been waiting for, let's do a couple examples. There we go. So Lucy has put her coins into six stacks and each stack has four coins. How many coins are there? So this would be a great time to draw a picture if you want to. I might regret this, right? So she has six stacks of coins, and each stack has four coins, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So here's stack one, two. Again, not the most beautiful stacks. Three, four, five, six. So I drew a picture, kind of not the most necessary, but like now we could see how many coins there are, right? She's got six times four. So that's going to be 24 coins. Again, solve the problem however feels best for you, right? But this is a multiplication problem, even though it doesn't blatantly state one of the multiplication words in the previous table. Next, a pet store has five tanks of fish. Each tank has the same number of fish, and the store has 20 fish total. So how many fish are in each tank? So I have 20 fish. And they're separated or divided up between five tanks. So if I take 20 divided by five, that gives me four. So there are four fish 
in each tank. 